Interestingly enough, the first code for Neo4j and the property data graph, uh, uh, graph database was written in India, in Bombay, in IIT Bombay. Right? And so that, that was sort of the genesis of, uh, and, and uh, um, I think the idea for graph databases and how you know, database itself would be structured and will sketch on a napkin on a flight to Bombay where you know, he worked with an intern to develop the first piece of code, right? So there's actually like deep, uh, you know, Indian roots there to start with. Um, so a lot of what I can bring from Google is that long-term thinking. What I can tell you is the numbers are shifting very fast, but the fastest growing piece is in Asia. And if I'm not wrong, and I may be wrong, but India is, either the top or in the top two of the communities that are growing. Um, so that's the current status. Overall in Asia Pacific, you know, totally, we are having sort of year on year growth is like we are seeing, you know, kind of close to doubling of growth, right? So that's roughly kind of the track. Um, you know, over the next few years, you know, we are hoping to continue on that trajectory, but you know, kind of we'll see how that shakes out. As we did a fundraise last year, um, which was our Series F, we raised more than $300 million um, uh, in that fundraise. And that was the biggest fundraise of any company in the history of databases. Right? And, but what that helped us do was to invest massively in growing our global footprint. Right? So prior to that, you know, we saw a lot of growth, but Neo4j was really community and developer driven, right? which means we are true to our open source roots. We have a community edition that's open source driven, that's widely, widely adopted. We have an overall community of almost a quarter million developers who are familiar, have used, have played around with Neo4j. And uh, I think arguably, if I'm not wrong, developers in India are probably the largest number in terms of any country in that developer pool. Um, and so when we had this infusion of funds, one of the first things we did was to start expanding globally, specifically in India. Right, so now we have an Indian presence, not just for services and support and sales, but also to invest in a strategic way kind of going forward. So we started with our first few, you know, sales leadership and country manager just last year, and now we have grown orders of magnitude just in this year, right? So this is a big bet for us in multiple ways. One, because there are roots here, but we also see a lot of innovation kind of happening in India with developers, both in Indian companies and companies actually innovating for global companies. So if we can again step back and think about the possible use cases for graph databases, people are still discovering what they can use graph databases for and how useful it is. So in some sense, it's actually gonna unleash a whole bunch of innovation because there are use cases that others may not have thought of, but they will think of in the future. So we're actually hoping for a lot of that to happen right here in India because of the developer community. Uh, it's as simple as like show up for a webinar, download some of the tools, and now we have a new community platform uh, based on Koros that we just launched uh, just a month back. So you can actually create an ID, you can kind of engage in the community, and if you want to contribute, you can start contributing back. Right, so you've got Neo4j engineers who are engaged over there. There are folks in my team uh, who are in developer relations who get kind of deeply engaged in that. Uh, there's Graph Academy courses that we offer for free so people can take these courses and engage. And then there are a few folks who, uh, you know, want to kind of do more and they want to stand out in the community. We have a program called Neo4j Ninjas. So you can actually become a Neo4j Ninja and then you can actively contribute back to the community. And it also increases your visibility for the skills that you've developed and gives you, you know, so you can give back to the community, right? So that's kind of one way. But very specifically, now within India and within the regions, we are, have, we are hiring a community manager who's going to be based here. In fact, we just did. And then uh, this community manager will be responsible for in-person meetups, right? Try to facilitate more connections, you know, with the folks here. And I think that will give a nice boost and will give a local presence for people who want to engage uh, in a way that they haven't before. The third piece that we are investing in, uh, which we already have, we have support and professional services, and we are starting to build partnerships and partner ecosystem in India so we can actually support a wider range of customers, right? So that's fundamentally sort of the roadmap. Um, and depending on how 
quickly we can or cannot go. Um, again, responsible growth. We want to go as fast as possible, but we also want to make sure as we hire people, as we establish the relationship, they're investing, you know, enough time, effort, and money to make sure that these relationships are successful. I'm very excited to be at Neo4j. Right now, it's four and a half, almost five months in, and I'm even more excited because number one, the opportunity and the paradigm shift that creates the opportunity is super interesting. And I think it's going to have a major impact on how computing is done going forward. Uh, secondly, it's a fantastic company, right? I mean, again, a founder CEO who invented the technology, founded the company as a CEO with a leadership team that's, uh, you know, they're a nice leadership team and they're really thinking sort of long term, right? So we're part of a leadership team where we can think about, you know, making the right decisions for the company and investing in a meaningful way not just over the next one to two years, but thinking about like next five to 10 years, that is actually super interesting. Um, so a lot of what I can bring from Google is that long-term thinking and setting up a company and growing it when it has to truly scale, right? And so with the investment that we received last year and the confidence that the investors have, this is kind of the time to say, look, it's not a few people in a few regions. Now we are a global company and so we need to act globally and we need to be engaging customers at a scale that we haven't before. So that is fundamentally uh, sort of my uh, goal here. So in terms of sort of leadership and what I want to bring is I want to hear, I want to hire really, really motivated and passionate people. I want to hire people who want to build something amazing and be proud of the legacy once they've built it. And then I want to do everything I can to help them do that, right? Because when somebody is building something and they have passion for it and they're doing it every day, they know what to do and what is the right thing to do better than anybody else because that's what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So my job is not to second guess what they do. My job is to say, okay, like how can I help you do what you want to do? How can I remove obstacles? How can I give you the resources? And how can I make you go faster, right? So that's the approach that I'm hoping to bring uh, to Neo4j over the next many years. The biggest challenge that I face and maybe the company faces is how do we grow faster, but how do we grow faster responsibly? Right? So we want to grow faster, but we want to do it in a way that's sustainable, that's truly scalable. We want to grow it in a way that employees feel, you know, pride and they can actually, you know, do what they want to do, but don't get kind of burnt out. And so managing the trade-off is probably sort of the biggest challenge. So we are hiring and we continue to hire, uh, you know, at a very rapid pace. But we want to make sure when we hire somebody, they take the time to learn the role, to learn the market, to decide, you know, how they want to engage and start getting effective. We want to give them the time, you know, to be able to do that. So I would say that is probably, you know, the biggest uh, challenge. So from a leadership philosophy, uh, I think I talked a little bit about it, uh, but I think patience is very, very important. Right? Uh, uh, combine that with trust. My belief is most people right, want to do a good job and they want to do the right thing. Right? So my job is not a second guess whether you're doing a good job. My job is really to like, okay, I know you want to do a good job. I want, know you want to do the right thing. How can I help you do that? Right? So I think that requires a, you know, sort of trust. It requires a little bit of patience. And when we invest, I believe as leaders, to build trust within teams and have a little bit of patience in the short term, we can actually move much faster in the longer term. I think one set of relationships we can start with just, you know, who do we want to hire and what do we look for? Um, I think we look for you know, competence and talent in the space. If you're a marketer, we want to make sure you have, you know, good marketing skill sets and aptitude for marketing. If you're a seller, we want to make sure you have good selling skills, you have empathy towards the customer. Uh, but behind all of that, there are two things that I think are critical. Um, to not just succeed in Neo4j, but just to succeed, I, that's my personal belief. One is, do you have intellectual curiosity? Do you want to learn? Uh, and if you're interested and you want to learn, then just by definition, you're gonna understand and you're gonna take initiative and you're gonna find different ways to help you know, others. 
Uh, and so that is a very, very important quality. The second quality is, in a strange way, uh, you know, uh, what is it? It's related to how you build trust. But my belief is, you can only build trust if you have low, what I call self-orientation. So, I will not be trusted by you if you think I'm only out to do the right thing for myself, <laughs> right? You will only trust me if you know that I have your back. Like I'm going to put you sometimes, if need be, ahead of my own needs. So I call that self-orientation. So we look for people who have capability and expertise, that's the basic, but then have passion and curiosity and have low self-orientation. So they want to truly help the team, the company, and help customers, prospects, developers. Uh, when it comes to partnerships, there is a similar element, right? So we want to have partners who are excited about the space, who are, uh, you know, sort of think about all the possible ways that they can innovate and bring that creativity to, you know, to customers jointly with us. Uh, and then we want to build long-lasting relationships.